let me state the obvious. It's more appealing to look at an image versus text. So with Google's image assets, you'll get a small little visual picture alongside your search network text ads. Again, just the search network. So in this video, we will show you the requirements needed to create image assets. I'll show you a real example in the wild on a search results page, and then we'll show you the few ways you can set up image assets for your search campaigns. I will show you a real example of an image asset alongside a search ad, but I think it's important to start with the requirements needed in order to include image assets for your search campaigns, because not every account is going to be eligible to use them. And there are five main requirements. First is that your account has to be at least 60 days old. So this is a heads up for any of the brand new accounts that are watching this video. Next, you have to have a good history of policy compliance. This means your account doesn't constantly get flagged for violating any of the policies. This means you haven't been suspended at all, all those sorts of things. And if you're thinking, well, my ads get flagged a lot, but I correct them, that type of stuff, you're going to be fine. If you're fixing the mistakes in a timely manner or disputing any of the disapprovals where Google is wrong, don't worry about it. You will still be able to use image assets. This one is fairly obvious, but Google still lists it. You have to have active campaigns. If nothing is running, then nothing can show. So of course, no one's going to see your image assets. This one is important, is that you need to make sure your account is not in any sensitive verticals. Think of gambling, any sexual or adult content, anything along those lines. Sorry, you will not be able to use image assets. If it's anything controversial, Google clearly does not want any images showing that content. And this one is also important and some accounts may have to wait a little bit before they can use image assets, is that your search campaigns have to be accruing spend within the past 28 days. And it specifically calls out search campaigns. So if you start an account that was mostly running maybe just display or YouTube, and then you decide to add search campaigns into the mix, doesn't matter if your account is 60 days old. Doesn't matter if you have good history compliance. Your search campaigns need to be running for at least 28 days before you can add them. These are the five main requirements, pretty standard, and for most of you who are watching this, odds are you're already eligible to start running image assets. So now let's go to a Google search results page and look at an example. Up above, you can see I searched for bathroom remodeling. First two are local service ads. We want to focus on this one right here that I am highlighting now. With the two normal search ads we see below, this circle icon right above the ad headlines, that is not an image asset. That is a business logo asset. I understand it's an image. But once we get into Google Ads, you will see it's categorized as a totally different asset. This square image off to the side, that is the image asset. You see if I hover over it, the gray bar at the very bottom, it's showing me that it'll still take me to the landing page that has been included within the ad. You cannot add a separate URL just to the image extension. So whatever you have set up as the final URL within the ad also will apply to the image. It is not like price assets. It is not like your site link assets. So hopefully already you're thinking you pretty much need to have ad group level image assets to make the biggest impact. And here it makes sense. I'm assuming this brand, if they're home solutions, they do more than just bathrooms. So in my opinion, right off the bat, they're doing a good job. They're not just showing me a random house image. They're actually showing me a bathroom, a fairly new looking one, something that visually connects with exactly what I was searching for with a bathroom remodeling search. And one more thing before we actually go into Google ads, if I hover over it, there's nothing for me to expand. I can't make the image bigger. The only way I can do that is if the user really just expands or zooms in their browser. No additional features here. So now that we know what one actually looks like, let's go into Google ads and set some up. Okay. Hopping into an actual campaign. You see, I already have it filtered to search campaigns and a specific campaign, but these are assets. So make sure you go to your assets section in your left-hand column. Here we see the business logo, which I told you in the example is not your image asset. We skipped over it because in our account, here is the image asset. As I said in the example, these assets, depending on your account is structured, will most likely be best suited at the ad group level. So in this Halloween campaign, I'm going to choose a specific ad group for men's costumes because I don't want to be showing kids costumes for this ad group. I don't want to show women's costumes for this ad group. So in this account, ad group level is almost a necessity, but like any asset you create in Google ads, the deeper you go, the higher priority it gets. So as we create an asset, since I was already in a particular ad group, it already has it at the ad group level. We can see in the drop down here, there isn't an account level. Image assets can only be set up at the campaign or ad group level. So what we do in every account, I always make sure I have assets set up at the highest level. It's a safety net. I'd rather have something there unless it's way off. 
but if you set up assets at the ad group level, it'll override anything set up at the campaign level. And ad group is what we're going to stick with. So if people are searching for men's Halloween costumes, I want to add images for these costumes. Ignore all this. This is just for our other videos, but understand that there is a way to add images in a variety of ways. If you've already uploaded several images to your asset library, you can just go ahead and select previous images. Maybe you want to scan a specific website or your social media. Just go ahead and enter your URL. No, I don't work for this brand, but it's perfect for this example. I can even scan Instagram. Oh, no images there. How about Facebook? Potentially give me more options, but none of these are relevant, whatever. I would select one of these, potentially crop them. You could look at free stock images. Don't recommend it, but we're going to upload our own. All right, these are four images I pulled from a men's help article. For image assets, you might see it at this gray bar up top. You do need at least one square image. That is mandatory. If I hover over one, you can edit it. And notice that the landscape ratio is optional, but it's recommended to give you more options. The four I uploaded were purely square, so I would have to try to crop something here that would make it fit. That one doesn't look bad but it's always recommended to upload the actual landscape size so you can understand exactly how it could look. So I'll select these two ratios and let's try it with the T-Rex. One more option here, landscape, see how this looks. Yeah, not the greatest, but it's what we got. Everything you upload will be saved to your asset library so you can go back and use it for future campaigns. And notice that you can add up to 20 images per level, whether it's campaign or ad group, 20 images. So then you can test a variety of different images alongside each other to see what is going to perform best. I'm going to save it for now. And there's an example of one of my costumes next to a search ad on mobile. When you're uploading square images, minimum pixel size is 300 by 300. Google recommends 1200 by 1200. For landscape photos, minimum pixel size is 600 by 314. Google recommends the most common size that we've used for Facebook right-hand columns, horizontal LinkedIn ads, and that's 1200 by 628. The only file formats eligible are JPEGs and PNGs, no GIFs, whether it's animated or static. I would recommend to try to add as many variants as possible. Remember we had up to 20. And then also, you probably saw in the blue box, you cannot include any logos, no text, and any blurry images are most likely going to be disapproved. Make them clean, make them clear. And now that I think about it, this Ricky Bobby one that has another brand's logo and text on it could potentially be disapproved. We'll see but then go ahead and save it. And then within the asset section, here's how you can go ahead and edit your columns once your campaign or ad group is running and live collecting information. Review all the metrics that are gonna show you if users are clicking on the ad more, if these images are leading to higher conversion rates, more conversions, you can go to your columns and then modify and add whichever columns within these categories are gonna give you the information you need to better optimize your images for your search campaigns. Let me actually go into this particular ad group. What I meant to say is ads within this ad group. And I'm just going to edit this current example. Yes, I know it has nothing to do with Halloween costumes. We just make this stuff up for these videos. But if you're in a particular ad or you're creating a brand new ad from scratch, you can add images to your campaign via the ad. And then let me choose a different one. I know it's not a costume or anything, but I need something that is square, doesn't have text on it. So I'll just use the Spotify logo, save it. Then I will save the ad and then I'm going to go back, click on assets. And as you can see, I am still in the men's costumes ad group. But when you're adding your assets to the actual ad, there was that little line above the image assets. It's telling you, you will add it at the campaign level. So I need to get out of the ad group view, look at all ad groups in the campaign. And there we see that is how the Spotify logo or whatever image you're adding to your ad is going to be used at the campaign level, essentially being the safety net thing I talked about earlier. Just making sure you have something shown alongside your text ads. I just wanted to clarify there is not an ad level image asset campaign or ad group. That's it. Okay. One more thing for this video that I want to make sure that everyone is aware of, and that is going to be automatically created image assets to learn more about that. Head on over all the way to the right till you see this more option. It's really more options. Click it. And there you will see account level automated assets. We don't have anything showing up here because nothing is running, but within your account, you may see that automatic image extensions could show up here. See how performance is doing compared to the actual manual ones that you have set up. If performance is terrible, we can turn them off. Go to this tab, account level automated assets settings. 
and we already did it in the original image video we did years ago, but this will default to on. This is an option for you if you want Google to publish images on your behalf. You have to acknowledge that essentially you're taking the blame for any of the images that could show up alongside your ads if it violates any policies, any copyright issues, all that stuff. But if you want to have full control over the images that show up alongside your search ads, change this setting to off. You have to select a reason before it lets you save it. I want to retain control and then save it. And yes, we still see it in the recommendations section in a lot of our client accounts. They want you to turn dynamic image extensions on, typically for campaigns that don't have any image assets at all. But that's how you can add image assets to your search campaigns. Get as many square images as possible that are clear, easy to see, and try to add them at the ad group level that really speak to the keywords that you are targeting. But we understand with the way that keywords work now, you may have to stick to specific themes. Are the images you're including satisfying all the potential searches that could happen within the ad group? And if you have any questions on how image assets work or how to set them up within your account, please let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.